My name is George Montine, and I'm hoping to help invent the transportation system of the future. So the history of the automotive industry has been one of tremendous accomplishment in the area of emission control. When we first started recognizing the problem back in the 50s and 60s, there were techniques that were employed to make the engines cleaner themselves. By the late 70s, we realized that the engine itself is, is not going to achieve the new standards that people were hoping to, to achieve. And that was when the development of the catalytic converter first started in earnest. And that uh, very quickly led to another 90% reduction in the emissions from vehicles. And that's going to continue as we go forward, perhaps even another 90% reduction. So we've made tremendous gains on the environmental friendliness of vehicles. At the same time, the efficiency of the vehicles has more than doubled, especially if you take into account the fact that the mileage may have stayed constant for a number of years, but the vehicle weight, the features, the power, the acceleration were all greatly enhanced at the same fuel mileage. Now we're focusing more on fuel mileage going forward, and we're going to see a doubling of fuel economy going forward as well. So there's been tremendous gains in the past, there will be tremendous gains in the future. And what a catalytic converter does is it flows the, the gases through this honeycomb structure. And the honeycomb structure is coated with materials such as platinum, palladium, and some other materials. And those tend to then complete these reactions at lower temperatures. And so what didn't get finished in the, in the combustion chamber now gets finished on the catalytic converter in, in the back of the vehicle. So this is the primary technology that's being used right now and will be in the future for combustion engines to meet the criteria pollutant standards. So the research that PNNL does on catalytic converters and the catalytic materials in particular basically involves our expertise in surface science, the, our ability to characterize those materials and then relate them back to performance. We don't actually produce catalytic converters or catalytic material, but the insights and the, the technical knowledge that we provide to the industry has been critical in a number of commercial offerings. So the automotive industry, as it's, as, as it's going forward and facing these challenges of, of greenhouse gases and fuel economy and, and uh, criteria pollutants, is facing this challenge with uh, several different types of technology. Uh, electric vehicles, for example, hybrid electric vehicles, natural gas vehicles, gasoline, diesel, biofuels uh, beyond ethanol. All of these technologies are in play. You can buy any one of those vehicles right now, and it's sort of a horse race. All these technologies are being developed rather quickly and aggressively, and which one wins will have an awful lot to do with some of the technical challenges that, that, that can be met and also the marketplace, which of the fuels at any given instance in time is the most economical for the consumer. For example, right now, diesel is at a premium. When 10, 15 years ago, diesel was actually the cheaper fuel. Natural gas prices have, have plummeted. Everyone's very excited about natural gas. A few years back, natural gas was very expensive. So having this variety in front of us is a boon to the consumer. Having these choices, it allows for various options that can be most efficient. And so we have to, we have to support all the horses in the race, and we look to support the challenges with each particular technology. Thank you.